Hello, I'm Charlie Mosier from the Foff Creative Sewing Center, Lacey, Washington, and Sound Sewing, Silverdale, Washington. This is a demo on the Foff Ambition 620. So this is a midline machine. So just to show you some things here, the machine actually has from the needle center over 200 millimeters of sewing space in here. So that is just shy of eight inches. Has a full screen panel with touch buttons to operate the panel. We have a speed control here so you can regulate how slow or fast the machine's going. The foot control will still regulate it, but it will never go faster than where you put the slide. So if you're up all the way, the machine will go full speed or as slow as you want with the foot control, but if you put it all the way down, the foot control will only run it at the slowest speed. I usually like to have it about three quarters. The top lid actually flips up so that the machine itself has a 135 stitches as well as two Al Alphabet fonts, which is Western, so our font here, as well as I believe the other one is Russian. The thread lays inside the machine horizontally, and that way uh, the thread just unspools off of itself easily without using the weight of the spool against itself. If you have a spool that doesn't fit down there, you can move it directly up. Just make sure it doesn't have that loop on the top that I just got. Make sure use it straight up. Lift the spool cap so it turns freely with a felt underneath, and then you can use your spool vertical. I prefer it horizontal. Your bobbin winds on top over here to the right. As we come down onto the machine here, I do have some functions right in front here where I do have needle down, immediate tie off, and it does have a scissor cut action. As I come down farther down here, the machine itself has a start stop key and a standard reverse key here. The bobbins are drop in bobbins. It does take a 15 class plastic bobbin and you can always see how much is left by simply looking at it. Over on the side over here, it does have a pressure uh, setting for how much pressure you want on the pressure foot. So that is the foot right here, how much kind of like poundage weight that this foot will put on your fabric when you lower it. So what will happen is, is if you make it a higher number, like four or five, you're going to get more poundage weight on your fabric, or you can make it lower by going to two and one for making it less weight. So a little bit easier to do those finer fabrics or the heavier fabrics. Normally at neutral where I have it now, it will do a wide range of fabrics. It does come with all the standard feet, so we do get a buttonhole foot with it, a pattern foot with for satin stitch, a pattern foot with the IDT cutout, which I'll tell you what that's about here in a moment, the uh, blind hem foot, as well as an overcast, this foot does both, your zipper foot, comes with a needle inserter, a package of needles, a, a little like flat screwdriver to allow you to come into here to change your plate, or to actually loosen and tighten your needle. Comes with a set of bobbins. Can't remember if I said buttonhole foot, so I'll say it again, buttonhole foot. And then you have your spool pin if you want it to do twin needles, as well as another extra felt, and then a thread net and a cleaning brush. Then I also think, yeah, it comes with two felts. I th there's one on the machine as well. I'm going to set my camera up in a different way now so that we can actually uh, see the machine in action. All right, so now I am zoomed into the needle so I can show you the needle threader. So this machine comes equipped with a needle threader built right on in. So I'm going to lower the foot so I have tension on my thread. And I'm going to just grab this hook right here and bring down my needle thread, bring it forward, put my thread in it. And when I pull on it and pull away, it threads the needle for me. And then I just pull that loop out, and then I put my thread right underneath. The machine itself has a great way to install the bobbin as well. So the bobbin actually goes in, it goes in counterclockwise, thread over to the top, and drops right on in, and then I just follow this groove. I like to put my finger on the, on the bobbin, but I just follow that groove all the way around to the blade, and I cut it. And that means when I start to sew, my bobbin thread will pull right up, and it's ready for me to start sewing. The next thing that this has on it is an IDT. So let me reset up the machine so I can show you what that is and explain it to you. 
All right, here's looking at the side view of the machine. So I'm on the left side. So normally we sit, you sit right here so you can see the front of the machine. This piece right here is what's called the IDT. Um, it also is referred to as the built-in walking foot. So IDT stands for Integrated Dual Transfer. So as this pulls down, it actually goes underneath my ankle and my foot. So my foot actually does have a cutout in the back to allow it to come in. Now you can see it a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over here real quick so I can turn my hand wheel. And see how I turn my hand wheel, how if I move it forward and back, how the foot will move forward and back along with the teeth which of uh, the feed dogs, which is the feed dogs down here. So this is going to give you more precise feeding with your top fabric along with your bottom fabric. Because most machines that do not have the built-in walking foot where this is actually, or the IDT, which is taken away, it only has the pressure of the pressure foot holding the fabric onto the feed dogs. So the only thing touching the feed dogs are the actual, the only thing touching the fabric, sorry, are the actual feed dogs. So that top fabric, you know, if you put two pieces together, let me zoom out here. And what will happen is if we take two pieces of fabric, especially if the fabrics are different types, like a flannel and a knit, and I put them together, the top, the bottom one, if I sewed it this way, the bottom one, the feed dogs would be touching the fabric, nothing would be touching this knit, so this knit would actually creep and crawl and twist and turn and actually stretch. The IDT went engaged, so went engage like that will actually not allow that top fabric to turn at all. So let me show you a couple of fibers of what will happen with the IDT versus without. Okay, what I have here is very sheer lining fabric. So this is used a lot of times when you're making uh, a garment and you're going to line line it with a sheer lining fabric or if you're doing a drapery and it has a sheer lining behind it. So this stuff here is on the straighter grain, it's nice and tight, but on the bias, it has this big major pull here. So I'm going to sew it on the bias. Now I'm going to disengage my IDT by pulling down and away. And I'm going to put this here and see I'm still on that bias. And I'm going to stitch. Now this machine is going to not really enjoy this fabric very much. So I'm going to do a needle down by simply pressing my needle down key. So what will happen is I'm going to press my needle down key and my needle will go down. And you can see how this is just nice and tight and just not very pleasant. You see that? Well, that's because even though this machine also has box feed, meaning the feed dogs feed in a box form, the, the sheer fabric itself, the, the weave of it, is just shifting a lot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm still on that bias. I'm going to put down that IDT and I'm going to lower my foot. And now, see how it lays perfectly flat now as I come across? So now if you look, I can literally show you right where I snap down my IDT and that's going to give you a much better performance. So that's the major way you can see the difference there. Okay, on this next one I have Polar Felice. Now Polar Felice does have a stretch in both directions, but it also has a really big stretch on the bias. So I'm going to fold this diagonally on the bias with my IDT still engaged and I'm going to just put this down so I can sew this seam. The next thing I'm going to do is on this machine, I have what's called a stretch stitch. It's actually, uh, it looks like a straight, but it sews over itself three times. It's stitch number two. So I press that and I'm going to sew this seam. And you notice how it for goes forward and back, okay? That's because it's doing that triple stitch all the way across. And with that IDT engaged, it's actually not going to allow it to stretch itself. Once I get done, I'm going to press my scissors. So I actually press. Ah, where are they? My scissors right there. Okay. And what that did is it actually finished the stitch and cut it for me so that when I pull this out, oh sure it did. Yeah, it did. I just got caught. Now, as I pull this out, I can see the sewer doesn't sew straight, but see how that stayed nice and flat? There is no ripple in it, but it also still will stretch. Okay. So really good if you're having t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, Felice, anything that you still need to have a good straight line, but you need it to move with the fabric. If I had done this with a plain straight stitch, when I pulled on it, it would snap. And if I didn't have my IDT engage, it would ripple or give that, you know, the kind of like a lettucing look. So that's where the IDT helps you. So if you're a garment sewer, or a home deck sewer, or especially a quilter, that IDT is really crucial. And that's what's so nice about the fact that this machine has it.
And I'm also going to show you that this is a very strong machine itself. So I have two really nice thick, stiff pieces of denim here. And I'm going to make sure that I have my standard sewing foot on. I am going to take off the IDT because a lot of people uh, have put out there on the internet, which is not true, that the reason why FOF has the IDT is they say that we need it for strength. We do not. Our machine is very strong. So I have just disengaged that IDT so it is not down. It's actually up. And I'm going to do these two layers of denim. I've gone back to a normal straight stitch. And just going to do, most machines will do two layers of denim. Let's actually roll up this denim and make, let's see here, how many was that? That is two, three, four, five, and then six is the bottom one. And now I go and see how the machine just goes up and over and straight down. Now the next thing we do is I'm going to use my scissors again to cut. So it went up and over, straight down. If I look at the back side of this, you can actually see that there was no hesitation in stitches. The stitches are all the same length and uniform. So there was no pushing to get it over. It went over. The only thing I did was I securely held down the seam so that it would not push the seam. And I didn't do that with a thingamajig or a, or a uh, hump jumper, nothing like that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew down the seam itself. And see, it sews very nicely down the seam as well. So the machine itself is very strong. And I've been able to comfortably do 8 to 10 layers of occasional denim on this, but this is easily 6 layers. So doing the bottom of handing up jeans, Levi's, those kind of things are not a problem. So up here on the top of the lid, when you actually open the lid of the machine, you have all your stitches listed. And they are listed in here by categories. They say that these first uh, 34 stitches are utility. The next from 35 to 61 are ones that they have geared towards quilters. Then we do have needle art. So we have cross stitch and heirloom like stitches. Then we have satin stitches for more scallops and um, just fun, really nice decorative stitches. And then we just have decorative stitches over here, which has like your flowers and your, your uh, circles. There's a little house, a tree, a crown, all fun little stitches over here. And then way, way over here are our sewing techniques, which are like our candle wicking stitches and ones that can be used with specialty feet that are available for the machine. Of course, you do not have to use the quilting stitches just for quilting. If you were doing crazy patch quilting and you really want this tulip flower on it, of course you can. Your machine does not know what you're doing. You do whatever you want. You just want to make sure that the machine is set up properly for what you need. So to show you the next thing, we're going to do a buttonhole. And I'm just going to do the standard buttonhole number 22. So I have picked it up on the screen there. So let's bring it down here a bit and zoom you out. Oh, I got you zoomed in pretty good, don't I? Okay, there you go. So now we got you down here. So if I want 22, I just simply touch 22 and it comes up and shows me the buttonhole. If I want to know what foot to use, I'd press the info key and it's telling me I should have foot five on. So foot five, I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. It's telling me I should have some kind of stabilization. My feed dog should be up and then my tension is at 3.6. This machine does not have a tension dial on it. It actually sets the tensions for you. So it's telling you where it's at. And if you don't like where it's at, once you've sewn, you can manually adjust it. So the machine is going to take you as you select different stitches to the uh, correct tensioning for that stitch automatically, which is really cool. The next thing I have on here is my width of my buttonhole. How wide do I want it from satin column to satin column and how dense, how satiny or opening I want the channel of the stitches. If I don't want to see all this here, I just press info and that cleans it all up. That gets rid of it right there. So let's bring you back over to the machine and we will show you how to set up a buttonhole. So this is foot five and it does tell us directly right here on the front that this is five. And the number must be readable for when you go put it on the machine. The next thing you really see is here's this, this bar. My autofocus is not working very well here. What if I bring you guys, there we go let the camera know what I want. Um, this bar right here is where it's going to snap on. So this is the clear foot of the buttonhole foot that's going to move, okay? The next thing we have on the top of this buttonhole foot, if I put my finger right here on, on the top of my foot and this, this movable piece here, see how it opens up on the top? That is so I can take a button. So if I have something like a jar full of buttons, like I do right here, I can actually just grab a button out of there and I just put it directly on here and close it. And it'll make a buttonhole automatically to fit that button. Pretty cool. So once I've done that, I'm going to take off the current foot here. 
So the foot that's on here right now is my standard 0A foot. So I'm just going to press right down. It drops off the foot. And now I'm going to come in and there's an opening here to really quickly bring this in and I am going to snap on my foot. Now my IDT was still off from the prior the prior uh, function I had just shown you. So if your IDT is engaged, this foot would not have snapped on. So that was something you would have to disengage. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fabric and I would have marked it where I wanted to go, but we're just plain today. So I'm just going to set this up. Sorry about that, okay. And I am going to make sure that this is just right. Oh, come on, focus. Oh, there we go. So I'm just going to get this right where I want and I'm going to lower my foot. The next thing i got to remember is, remember how I showed you the needle threader here? But right behind the needle threader where my finger is, right here, there's a silver thing. Just right here. That is for our buttonhole foot. And when I pull it down, there is a figure for the buttonhole. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out here so you guys can see me do this a little bit better. Is on the machine, I have a start-stop key right here. I can use this instead of my foot control. The machine does come with a foot control, so I can still use my foot control, but when I'm doing buttonholes, the machine is going to just run its whole self completely to the end, and I want to make sure that I didn't stop it, the machine stopped when it was ready. So I'm going to use my start stop key. So I'm going to start it. It's going to do a straight stitch back, then it'll do a satin stitch forward, then it's going to go onto the other side, do a straight stitch back, bar tack at the back, and stitch forward and it's going to bar tack at the other side. This is the correct way to make a buttonhole. When they do a satin stitch in one direction and a satin stitch in the other direction, your thread looks twisted. This one, because both satin stitch were done in the same direction, the buttonhole comes out really nice. I'm just zoomed. There we go. Zoom too far in. So there it is. Now let's say I have all my buttonholes done, but now oh, do I have to pull out a needle to sew on all my buttons? Absolutely not. I'm going to take off the foot, I'm going to put the lever back, and I'm going to now take off my button. Now I'm going to show you another thing on the back of the machine real quick. So let me get the machine turned around. All right, here we are at the back side of the machine. So here's the back side of the machine. And I'm going to take off my free arm by just simply pulling it out. And then right here's a lever. I'm going to push it that to the what would be the back side of the machine, so towards my my hand wheel. That actually lowered my feed dogs. Okay, so now I'm back to the front. So now I'm going to put my fray yarn back on. So by lowering the feed dogs, so my feed dogs they will they will still move. Well, no, they don't move. Some brands they do still move down below, but they wouldn't go up above my plate. So that means now what I can do is I'm going to come right on in here, and I can now take my foot. They do make a specialty foot to help you do this as well. Um, I just didn't bring mine today, so I'm going to show you this way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, stitch 29, which is the sew on button feature. Now on the sew on button feature, what's really cool about it is it will actually uh, allows you to set the width for your button. And most buttons out there are the same width if they are metric. Okay, so you can go from a small button to a large button and generally they're the same width. But every once in a while we do get them where they're slightly spaced different so I could change them here. This is right here, going to I'm going to tell it how many times I want it to crisscross across my button from hole to hole. So I'm going to leave it at the default of 80. Okay, then I'm going to just come right back down here. The next thing I am going to do is try to get you focused better. I have, I know it's really hard to see, but I'm going to sink my needle into the first hole. I am going to lower my foot. I like to turn my hand wheel once to make sure I hit the second hole. Then I press the go key. And then it ties off, so it literally knots it. Okay, and I'm going to do, take it out. Then I would simply cut it. And there we go, I have sewed my button on. Now some people like to tie these off and then and then uh, cut them. I just cut them. I, on the back side, I just uh, give this a nice trimming up and that, th that button is not coming off. This is something I do on my children's uh, garments when I get them all ready for school and to do their school shopping. When you buy garments at the store and they put buttons on, they don't, they don't anchor them. They don't tie them. That's why they fall off all the time and get loose after a few washings. I actually will match my threads and just 
I don't even take them off. I just re-sew them down again, right in place. And that shirt will wear, wear out much quicker than the buttons will ever fall off. So my, uh, some other really nice features of the machine is you do have a free arm in the, uh, a storage in the front as well as a storage in the back of your free arm. And again, to pull this off is just simply pull it out. There is a extension table available by FOF that actually snaps directly onto the machine to give you more space. And that way these actually just all fit right in here. I usually put my buttonhole in the back. Um, it also does come with a seam ripper. I uh, noticed that I didn't have one in my kit here, which means uh, it probably won't walk about. So I'll have to find it and get it back with this machine. But then everything stores. It also does come with a carrying case as well. And this is, again, the Ambition 620, and it's in the middle of the line. So some really nice features of it is the on-screen programming. You have needle up, needle down by press a button. You could do it with your foot control as well. You have an immediate tie off so when you're stitching and you need to anchor it and you don't want to use a reverse you want to anchor in place that will be this one the scissors allows you to cut at any time you do have a thread cutter on the side here it does run with a start stop key which you can also use with your speed control the standard reverse your feet snap on and off with the idt free arm comes off now i do need to make sure i flip that feed dog up so i'm going to just go in there flip that up and not mean to hit the camera <laughs> <laughs> then you do have, uh, because we do have Alphabet on here, you do have the uh, flexibility to come in and store things into memory. And right now somebody has a decorative stitch in here where they've gone in and altered the stitch and saved it as well. And so you could do that or you can spell a name and put a heart at the end of it and have a lot of really good flexibility. You do have built-in information so it tells you uh, where how to set itself up. And then we do have real easy key in at entry to get to your different stitches where you can then control your width, your length, your density, and all of that. If this is a machine you think you might be interested in, feel free to reach out to us at the Foff Creative Sewing Center in Lacey, Washington, or Sound Sewing in Silverdale, Washington. And please be sure to visit our website at soundsewing.com.